As we start this segment for Jasmine, I want to give a shout out to a few people. And as we get more into the research, you're going to see about three or four people get this proper shout out. So first person I want to give a proper shout out to is Lil Bid Man. And uh, you're going to see why. So let's go ahead and pull this up right now. And to start things off, we are going to talk about this whole thing of Sony Bank. Now, as we know, in the past, we've done some deep dives about Sony Bank and some of the connections with Jasmine and so on uh, by simply you know, connecting the dots and whatnot, right? So on this, you're going to see some things that are more than interesting, at least in my opinion. So let's go ahead and full screen this for a bit. And this is, of course, taken from the medium. Sony Bank Connect for Web3 Entertainment to launch in summer 2024. How long ago was this? March 15th, 2024. So again, roughly about a week or so ago, right? You see a lot of references in Japanese and so on. But the point is, seeing some of the things listed here. NFTs, Sony Bank Connect, so on and so forth. Sony Bank announced the release of quote-unquote Sony Bank Connect in summer of 2024, aiming to contribute to the expansion of the creator and fan economy in the Web3 era. Now, guys, let's just state this. We understand how big, you know, the Jasmine connection is in regards to Sony. And, you know, I'll give credit where credit's due. Also, A-Star is at the forefront as well. But getting more into this, there's things that you simply cannot dismiss. And if anything, I thought I would bring it to you guys tonight. So let's get a little bit more into this, and you will see this whole thing about what? Sony Bank Connect is a smartphone app for the Web3 Entertainment domain, themed, quote, allowing anyone to easily and safely enjoy connecting to expanding moving experiences. Now, guys, where I'm going with this is this, okay? You got to keep in mind, some of these apps may be independent apps. Um, you also know that I'm going with the whole thing of Jasmine doing some big things with the Super Wallet. What could we possibly see with the two working with each other? Or is this disguised as a super app? Now, of course, I have nothing confirmed on that. But when I got more into the research, I just want to present some material. You could draw your own conclusion. But you have to stick around for this. You won't be disappointed. By connecting with the service SNFT, it will provide a function to display and enjoy NFT users' own SNFT, a marketplace where users can purchase and manage NFTs with a credit card. Purchased NFTs can be viewed on SNFT and sent to a wallet. It uses an environmentally friendly public chain. SNFT explores the digital existence together with fans and brands. SNFT Inc. is 100% invested by Sony Group. Okay. So, of course, some people will say, well, then there's your answer. And I would agree with you to a sense. But when we get more into this, you're going to see some things mentioned here in regards to this specifically. And that is, of course, these campaigns and more specific about U.S. dollar denominated green finance security token. And, of course, the response to this particular survey. Now, before many months ago, last year, Heck, even people before me, like Jesse, KAR Finance, and lots of other great researchers in this space, have more than elaborated on the green initiative. Um, you guys hear me joke around quite a bit when it comes to, you know, Jasmine and, you know, shout out to Corey Bebe with the Rice Crop Consortium, right? But the point is understanding that while that sounds cool, there's actually a real thing there. What is the real thing? Stay tuned for a little bit more about this. Let's blow this up a little bit more. And yes, you'll see here that Sony Bank Connect will continue to expand its functions after release by incorporating customers' requests, thereby contributing to the future development of Japan's Web3 entertainment domain and this whole thing about blockchain-based wallet, right? Look at this. Yes, underway for the release of that blockchain-based wallet. So it's interesting to see some of the terminology labeled here and who's basically going to be using it, right? Getting into the next part of this, this is a little bit more from Lil Bidman. I want to share this as well, okay? So this is March 17th, 2024. 
comes from Coin Geek, you know, and as we know, Coin Geek covers uh, quite a few other things other than just Jasmine. So you see this reference here: Sony Bank unveils U.S. green security token, connect app with NFTs and Web3. When you get more into it, it just kind of pounds it home about this whole connection of you know Sony Bank and the launch of this mobile app, uh, NFTs, you name it. But it says outside of the NFT-based mobile app, Sony Bank says it will roll out a green finance security token in the coming months. The security token targeting specific Japanese residents will be U.S. dollar denominated, and funds will be raised, um, or will be, excuse me, administered by trust by Tokyo-based Sumo uh, Tomo Mitsui Trust Bank. Right, we talked about them before too. The tokens are expected to be issued on Securitize, a private blockchain uh, platform, and it's accentuating Sony's keen drive toward embracing digitalization. I'm um, not going to get into all these specifics here about, you know, Sony Bank's token issuance being paid at $1 million. But this part where it goes on to mention about the greater levels of participation and how Sony says it will incentivize investors with NFTs via Connect mobile apps set for commercial release in the summer, well, it makes you wonder about the whole timing of all this, right? Um, this other statement, Securitize Sumi Trust, Sony Bank have previously elaborated or collaborate, excuse me, in a digital securities issuance revolving around real estate in Japan, RWA. Now, let's just take a pause on that. I know it's a lot to mention. Have you guys been noticing? You know, I talked about this yesterday when Tokenizer was on the show. Have you guys noticed on the last week, you know, real world assets that are tied into um, this whole thing of, you know, blockchain DLT have really been doing well. Realio, we cover that since eight cents. I mean, God, I hope some of you guys have some Relio. I mean, my God, Relio, right, went up to way over $3, you know, like um, I think it was like 308 may have been a little bit higher than that. Mike Cornwell were talking about like, wow, you know, this is basically like a 30X or more, okay? And while this segment is, of course, about Jasmine, understand that real world assets that are tied into some of these technologies are really starting to stand out. It's not just... Recognizing Relio, I mean, I cover Clearpool. That's done incredibly well as as well. But again, whether it's Bank Social, you know, it's where Relio or Propy. I don't have any Propy, but I recognize it's pretty good. Real world assets, so they have a lot of value. Larry Fink has more than talked about some of these things. But to see Jasmine also possibly in the discussion of getting something going in regards to this, you know, this issuance revolving around Japan and real world assets. Basically, it's like this. Strike it up as another utility layer or another sector that they can be part of. That's a big win in my book. Now, to take you a little bit more into this and why I'm obviously pointing out to you, is this right here. And let's go ahead and full screen it again. What we're going to see is this talk, this mention, this article. Sony Bank is not only the subsidiary exploring blockchain use cases in the Sony group with several entities racking up success in their experience with the technology, but they're like, you know, it says here several patents revolving NFTs. Metaverse, so on and so forth. Of course, some people are going to point out, yes, A Star. You got to keep in mind, we have found out more than enough times that Jasmine, just as much as A Star, has some real things going on when it comes to Web3 adoption. So, what exactly and why does it matter? Well, I'll take you to this. This is some old research, but it's more valid than ever. I want to give a shout out to the Bitcoin forum. This guy, 33QE. He said he wanted second opinions on Jasmine, but in his research that I found out, and again, if you're new, look at this. He said he didn't know anything about Sony before he started looking into it, but he discovered Sony is a massive behemoth, movies, video games, and everything. But again, like we always point out, Sony, are you aware that they have their own bank? Well, there's a reference to moneykit.net. Do you know that Sony has their own issue, uh, insurance company? We point out as well. Do you know that Sony has their own payment systems? 
Did you know that Sony has people at Mega Banks, MUFG? We cover that maybe three or four times. But the point is recognizing this. And here's, I guess you could say, some of the juicy parts. Let me just zoom in a little bit more. I know that wasn't big enough. MUFU, MUFG, for example, right? One of the former presidents, as we know, runs their Sony Financial. Did you know that the same bank owns 24% of Morgan Stanley? We point out some of these things. So all this is worth being pointed out. And I covered the whole thing about Lime in the past. But this is also really interesting. When you see things about, you know, this whole thing of Grayscale, Santander, Coinbase, right? Sony invested millions into all this, and especially this part, Securitize.io. Now, I want to take you over to this because when you see this, you can see why I spent the time, if you will, to connect all this, all right? So this is straight from the Sony Bank site, okay? And um, actually, it's not straight from the site. It's from Money Kit, right? That was the one he was referencing. It says, take your bank with you, seamless payments inside and outside Japan, multiple currencies, all in one card. Now, where I'm going with this is this, okay? It's this whole notion that when you look more into Jasmine, and especially leading up to this roadmap, Everything that was mentioned in regards to the super wallet sure as the heck sounds a lot about like what Sony Bank was trying to accomplish, but more importantly, what the Sony wallet, yes, the Sony wallet is trying to accomplish. And to see some of these things before the target of 2024, does it coincide with everything that Jasmine's trying to do? Well, possibly, but I think there's something here. And the reason why I want to put out some of this out there and so on it's not just to be speculative but to also kind of reconfirm some things of the past now we'll get to the panasonic segment especially you know because that was speculative news in the past and it was confirmed as recently and you know it's great to do the research and get confirmation but this part i think is crucial okay and if anything we're gonna zoom in a little bit more about this so you have these things about financial foundation in and outside Japan. Just hear me out on this. Foreign currency accounts, um, the yen account, um, this whole thing about ATM withdrawals per month, uh, foreign currency remittances. You know, we're not covering, obviously, Stronghold tonight, but we understand that Stronghold could play a huge factor into the whole concept of remittances. But Jasmine and remittances, I think, needs to get mentioned because as we know jasmine is entered into the whole ball game of you know finance democracy so when you see this citation here or reference i should say foreign currency remittance making a foreign currency remittance online remit up to 11 currencies directly from and to your accounts in and outside japan again think about a lot of the things that was mentioned the last year or so when it comes to jasmine and I like this. Access your money globally with what? Sony Bank Wallet? International Visa Debit Card? Seamless payments in and outside Japan all on one card? Now, I get it. Some people say this has nothing to do necessarily with Jasmine. But you got to keep in mind, it's the models. And it's understanding that you have guys tied into Sony Bank that own the patents. And these patents will be used, obviously, for what? For the super wallet. So don't overthink it, even though it doesn't directly say it right here. And of course, there's more information about the Sony Bank wallet. We're not going to talk about that. But I want to take you over to here as well. This is a, a little bit more in regards to moneykit.net about the Sony Bank and so on. But I want you guys to understand why we put so much emphasis on this super wallet. So Sony Bank wallet, the world in your wallet, make direct seamless payment in and outside Japan all by one card. Now, for a lot of you guys are saying, like, Max, I don't understand where you're going with this. I don't understand, you know, th this has nothing to do with Jasmine and so on. You have to keep in mind this. There is apps that create things to be enabled. And a perfect example would be, for example, a personal data locker. If we see things being mentioned, Web3 and these storage solutions and so on, I'm telling you flat out, 
it's kind of like they go hand in hand with each other. And we're going to see a little bit more evidence to support the notion. I'm going to blow this up a little bit more and take you to a little bit more about why I decided to get more into this. And if anything, why people like Lil Bidman were pointing this out. It says, meet Sony Bank Wallet, our international Visa debit card. Sony Bank Wallet, cash card, Visa debit functionality. You can withdraw cash directly from your yet foreign currency accounts in Japan, more than 200 countries, but to also make uh, easy payments anywhere in the world from one card. Keep in mind some of the things that are mentioned here, okay? So one thing I also love is this, 90,000 partner ATMs in Japan. Don't ever overestimate the whole thing of the significance of those Bitcoin, Bitcoin ATMs. I'm telling you flat out those examples that we gave you guys in regards to um, recognizing what happens when you have the feature of a personal data lo a locker as an option on those touch screens is massive, absolutely massive. I love some of the other things that are kind of mentioned here. People will call this a coincidence. I don't think it is. Club S Platinum members get unlimited fee wave withdrawals. I get it. Some people say, well, that exists in any debit card and so on. You have to keep in mind that when we talk about Jasmine, we're also talking about Platinum data. Something to be said about that as well. Get into this next part of what we have about using the Sony Bank wallet outside of Japan. Look at this for a second. No need to exchange foreign currencies before you travel. You can withdraw cash in more than 200 countries, regions, so on and so forth. And of course, it mentions the low fees. But you have to keep in mind why this all matters. And I know sometimes people criticize me and say, man, get to the point. I want you to understand where it all comes together first, okay? And then we tie it in at the end. So look at this for a second. Let's full screen this as well. Wish I could make this a little bit bigger, but it kind of gets all lost in translation because, you know, it is a uh, uh, interpretation, okay? So it says this about Sierra from the Sony Bank Market Research Team. After becoming a customer of Sony Bank in early 2019, uh, this person noticed that she was only using Sony Bank Wallet occasionally. So in December 2019, she decided to use Sony Bank Wallet to check if she could really go cashless in Japan. Again, think about this, cashless in Japan. Action, reaction, Japan used to be pro-cash. And now they're going, of course, cashless in light of the whole thing of COVID. She set out to use her Sony Bank wallet as much as possible, pay for goods, services, day to day, to check how easy it is to use around town and if there were any benefits from using it. Uh, look what it says here. Mission, live a cashless life for one month using Sony Bank wallet in Tokyo. Objectives, to confirm the extent which I could use my Sony Bank wallet to pay for things. So my thing is this, okay? Understanding that the PDL, understanding... Um, it being tied into, you know, like we've talked about before, Japanese yen denominated stable coins or the DD token benefiting the society and so on. Everything is literally written on the wall on how this can all work together. You can have examples, and I don't think this is a stretch at all, where the Sony wallet is literally your blueprint, your template for what? The super wallet. And some people say that's a stretch. I don't think it is because what we do know is the connections. And what we do know is some of this exclusive patents, especially Kazuma Sato, right? And how that could be applied over to taking some of that and applying it towards the super wallet for Jasmine. I don't want to elaborate fully on just this, but I will take a moment to get more into it. This other part about e-money. Think about it, guys. Look at this. Using Sony Bank Wallet instead of e-money eliminates the need to charge your card. Convenience stores, commuter pass offices, hotels, restaurants. And it just goes on and on in regards to some of this stuff, right? You got to keep in mind, what about Jasmine and the whole concept of Nippon travel? So what about having your data collected in a safe manner? What about... You know, some of these things in regards to like we talked about in um, some of these deep dives talking about, you know, yeah, uh, these patents will be used in conjunction with, for example, 
you know, checking into hotels or traveling all around Japan. And it's not just the people of Japan. You know, we, we've showed evidence in regards to uh, people outside of it and so on, right? Uh, this part, I think, is also crucial. You, you know, often thought that using cards for small payments at a local mom and pop shop might be inconvenient for shop owners. During this person's long month, long mission, they decide not to carry any cash, consciously to keep an eye out for Visa Mark everywhere they went, given how uncommon it is to use at many restaurants, so on and so forth. Again, what about the whole thing of keeping an eye out for personal data lockers used here? This is the point I'm trying to make. The point I'm trying to make is understanding that the Sony bank wallet is a big deal in Japan, but the next era of having a super wallet, an all-in-one wallet, will be even that much more of a bigger deal. Now, I want to get into this part, and of course this is about the whole thing of the roadmap, and we're going to tie this in to why I mentioned all this about the Sony wallet. Okay, so listen to this part. This is good, but I want to zoom in a little bit more about this. So Hara, a lot of you guys have seen some of the things that he's posted lately, um, especially this. You know, this was uh, posted a few days ago, right? He says he hereby released the 2024 roadmap, and if anything, with Jesse and Rob, I'm going to elaborate a little bit more with them this coming Saturday. So look out for that show roughly the afternoon-ish, depending on where you live. He says, this year, based on the most basic white paper roadmap, Jasmine will focus on two specific points and also announce their expansion to new areas. First, to further expand into the IoT market, develop a joint platform with a world-class company that will spend three to six months linking data from devices to individuals. Again, guys, think about this. Devices to individuals. So, why did I go through all of that? Again, don't ever overthink it. There would be multiple devices. If anything, what about the actual Sony wallet for it, for example? You have to have places where you can store it safely and so on, or maybe like how that data is used. We're talking about next era for Japan. And if anything, for that region of the world, being able to use your personalized data and have a say on where it goes and so on even if you are checking into nip and travel or some of these other places right look at this goes on a little bit more about this we will then develop yes there's the point a wallet for the exchange of data for value and lock up for the tokens ecosystem embedding again understand the connection on why I went through all the trouble of sharing some of this stuff with you. Finally, as an upfront investment, we aim to open a new carbon credit exchange. Again, back to everything we were talking about in regards to uh, some of the references in regards to going green. With Jasmine providing all the infrastructure. Again, all of the infrastructure, not just some of it. He will discuss the details in the space in the com community next week. Um, the other day, I think it was last night. Um, you know, shout out to Rob. He, you know, Crypto Future 99, he was, you know, sharing that whole thing of the, the Telegram AMA, right? It was big. But look at this for a second. It says hashtag Jankshin. Let's blow this up. 2024 roadmap, data valuation, focusing on the specifics, the, you know, special focus on increasing the type and volume. IoT device collaboration, partnership with big IoT device company. We already got the big bombshell in regards to Panasonic, and we'll get into that here in a bit. Development of a new function with the company, demonstration of IoT data utilization in qu quarter three, quarter four. Um, and then look at this, guys AI cu customization, uh, additional AI specifications for the personal data locker, quarter one, quarter two, and expanded blockchain PC functionality for AI quarter two and quarter three. So again, I think this whole thing of recognizing all this is big. And of course, you know, tokenomics, I'm going to wait to talk about this a little bit more on Saturday. But again, I like this Jasmine wall implementation, exchange collaboration ecosystem, token and value exchange within a wallet. Um, again, understanding it's not just 
one sector that Jasmine is able to reach. That's a lot of particular sectors. And when you get more into it, back to the whole thing of the carbon credit exchange, um, you know, compliant with Japanese regulations, obviously. And I do like this, and we'll talk about this on Saturday, credit offset functionality with the token burn. Now, in the past, this was never utilized, ever. It, it was kind of like you have this functionality, and we've done a deep dive about this, but they never actually used it. And so now to see this, a combination of the lockup with a burn, I mean, I, I'll be honest, I was more than satisfied with the concept of a lockup, but to have it with the burn functionality, absolutely huge. And of course, I'd be loving to hear Jesse's take on it, Rob's and so on. But guys, I mean, I'm telling you flat, there's a lot of news, of course, that's happened in regards to Jasmine and we're going to get into all of it. So um, this other part about standards, we'll get more into that as well. Launch of testnet, limited trading, all sorts of good stuff, right? Here's the thing. Let me come back into the frame for a second. I want to pound it home just a tad bit more in regards to uh, Sony and these banks, okay? So here's Neo X tricks, all right? I should have probably put this a little bit before what we just shared, but that's okay. Neo X Tricks points out here about Mitsubishi UFJ Financial Group, Somo T or Sumitumo Mitsui Banking. Again, back to the like the other research from two years ago. But the point is, SNBC, Jasmine's main bank, guys, think about this. Two of Japan's leading financial institutions are shareholders of Japan Travel Agency. This is why I mentioned all this stuff with you guys tonight. In addition, MUFG extends its influence as a bank and shareholder. Worth noting that MUFG and SMBC have significant global presence. Uh, their global reach provides crucial financial support to local partners. And again, back to the whole thing I was talking about with Nippon, right? You can see that reference there. What's also down here in regards to shareholders, Bank of Mitsubishi, UFJ. Look at this other one. Sumotumo, Sumitumo, excuse me, Mitsui Banking Corporation. So it's all verifiable when you look more into it. And the pounded home even that much more, you have Samuel Kim, a.k.a. Jasmine AI, post about this. He says, Sony Bank becomes what? First Japanese bank to sell dollar-denominated digital securities. Of course, there's a, um, a whole article here about it. This was posted on uh, March 4th. Here's the reference, just in case you're wondering about it. Um, it's not perfect, you know, interpretation. But again, look at this. Sony Bank becomes first Japanese bank to sell dollar-denominated digital securities. Um, and then, of course, revealing all the stuff we were talking about, you know, and so on. But my thing is this. Why did I point this all out to you? Why try to connect the dots? Maybe some of you guys already know about some of this stuff. So my thing is this. Let's jump back to this for a second, all right, for you can see some of this. Um, and so I know some of, this, some, of this, some of this stuff might scare you when you hear the, the whole talk of securities. But again, understand this. The FSA, the JVCEA, we're talking about Japan. We're talking about Jasmine being the first to be regulatory compliant with a sector that is supposed to be the Japan's version of the SEC. So even if it got labeled in their own country as, you know, what Jasmine's trying to do is like securities and so on. Well, what would that necessarily mean moving forward? It means that they're still good because they have dotted the I's, they crossed the T's. And here, again, as an example, um, I think I've gone ahead and highlighted it for you. Again, I'm trying to pound home this whole thing about Sony Bank, okay? So in my own research and so on, all right, this collaboration, once you guys can understand this whole introduction of digital securities, for example, backed by green bonds, right? Don't get it twisted. You have to keep in mind, and let me just stop the share on that one. You have to keep in mind, this move, what does it signify, right? I'd be asking that if I was one of the people in attendance tonight. It does signify a shift towards this whole notion of leveraging blockchain tech for financial products. Guys, this is why Jasmine has positioned themselves to enter into this realm of finance democracy. And again, I understand that IoT is always going to be at the forefront when it comes to Jasmine. 
you understand the bigger picture and it's like, hmm, there is something there. Yeah, you better believe it. So leveraging blockchain tech for financial products. Digital securities, hear me out on this. I know it scares a lot of people away. Backed by green bonds do what? They highlight in themselves a growing trend towards sustainable investing and environmental responsibility, of course, in the financial sector. Say what you want. This is all about a bigger picture of what not just Jasmine is looking to do, but Sony connected to the bigger picture of Society 5.0, whether you want to agree with that or not. There's a few other key things I want to get into. And yes, we will tie in the whole thing about the super wallet. But this whole notion that we have for, I guess you could say the first time, a first Japanese bank to do what? Handle ST denominated in foreign currency. You better believe it's a big deal. Why is it such a big deal? Well, people like myself, Jesse, and so on, we have been talking about for at least a good couple years this whole thing of what happens when we have not just local denominated currencies paired up with Jasmine, Jasmine, but what if we bring in some of the foreign ones, right? And we did see this a few months ago um, in regards to, you know, Circle being unbanned. What's next? Tether? Right. That would be a big player that brings in more volume. And you say what you want, shortly after we saw Circle get unbanned and so on, and um, we saw, for instance, you know, this law that was passed, okay, becoming, or um, excuse me, a bill that was passed, became an act, you saw action and reaction. It was the first big significant pump for Jasmine in over a year. And of course, you know, you saw the whole thing about Hong Kong, the rest is history. You got to keep in mind, this whole thing about denominated dollars, marking a whole thing of pioneering this thing, if you will, um, in the Japanese banking sector, definitely demonstrates, in my opinion at least, and I'm not the only one that feels this way, a willingness to embrace global financial trends and offer diverse investment opportunities, of course, to customers. Does that sound familiar to you? Yes, it does. What is it in a nutshell? Isn't that like an ETF? Yes. Now, I know there's no news in regards to ETFs, especially when it comes to you know Japan and so on, but understanding getting from one part of where we're at, going to the next part, setting yourself up or organizations up for the next big move. Summer 2024 should be huge, right? What about innovation? Well, there's lots of innovation. What about customer acquisition? Hear me out on this. Were you aware that Sony Bank's plan to utilize ST and NFT for customer acquisition indicates a strategic approach to tap into emerging technologies? What's crucial to understand here is that these are not just your regular run-of-the-mill NFTs. Like I pointed out before, you know, that report from NPR, 95% of all NFTs are basically worthless. What about the 5%? What they didn't mention is the 5% that are tied into utility-based NFTs. That's Game Changer. And like we mentioned in yesterday's show, Casper, for instance, right, is going to be big on utility-based NFTs. Do you see a common thing here? So by offering a novel investment, excuse me, um, of these products and leveraging some of these, um, with assets like, for example, utility-based NFTs, Sony Bank in itself would aim to attract tech-savvy customers and enhance its market presence. Again, its market presence. So by having an enhanced market presence and having these guys that literally have worked with you in the past that created patents, for instance, you could see where this is going to go. Now, where am I going with that? Well, to one of the biggest topics you're probably waiting for to talk about. And that is what? Jasmine Super Wallet, obviously. And of course, the whole idea of former Sony executives, you know, being part of the bigger picture. Hear me out on this if you never heard me out for the whole night. And I know it's a lot to get into and a lot of comments to catch up into. But this involvement of former Sony executives, including Kazuma Sasato, obviously, and obviously Tadashi Morita and so on and so forth. Um, in Jasmine, you have to keep in mind 
it's the whole thing of the relation to digital wallets. Again, back to the whole thing of why I showed you the whole outline of Sony Bank and the wallet. So it's those wallets and the whole thing of financial technology tied into those specific technologies and innovations and so on. Everything that we laid out tonight does, in my opinion, suggest a convergence of expertise and experience from the tech and financial sectors. There's more. With the upcoming launch of Jasmine Super Wallet, if I haven't caught your attention yet, I guess I never will, and that's okay. There's potential for synergies between Sony Bank's digital securities initiative and what? Yeah, you heard me right. The Jasmine platform. And the Jasmine platform will do all of what Hara mentioned, have all the infrastructure. Now, that's a bold statement to state that, right? But you have to keep in mind where we go from here, where we go forward from here. The significance of these developments for Jasmine does lie in the potential integration of digital securities, NFTs, and other innovative financial products within the what? The super wallet ecosystem? Now, I know this sounds absolutely nuts, but a lot of things that we talked about in the past have come true. By leveraging the expertise of former Sony executives, whether it's Kazuma Sasato or Tadashi Morita, we can capitalize on emerging trends in fintech and blockchain technology. Jasmine in itself could very well position itself as a leading player in the digital finance space. And I said this numerous times, we should take Jasmine more serious when it comes to finance democracy. And a lot of people kind of just like, eh, I don't know. IoT, yes, but finance democracy, kind of mixed on that. I understand, but you got to keep in mind, all this offers a comprehensive suite, yes, a suite of services to users, not just in Japan, but abroad. Some of you guys ask what cold storage solution I use. I use this, and it is the Decent Wallet, all right? I also, of course, have a ledger uh, like this, all right? You can get a discount, basically, from going into the affiliate link, which is in all the live video descriptions and recorded and so on. And for the Yahoo's or that are out there, they're like, this is just a shield. And you know, we'll fix point this out. And it's a great point. Were you aware that you don't necessarily get a discount link just going straight to the site? No, you actually have to go through a platform like this. So how cool is that? You know, I don't think anybody's complaining about that. But anyway, use the link, get a discount. There's another one here. If you're the type of person you want to get one for your you and your you know, significant other, uh, you can get two of them. They have a, they actually have another promotion, which is this. And I think this is cool. You can get an all in one card wallet plus backup card package. Interesting. I thought that was cool. And again, one of the main key things I like about the decent wallet is not having to do the, the red tape of you know, jumping through all the hoops for XDC and the custom folder. I mean, Edward Vincent can vouch on that. Some of you guys can too as well in regards to Ledger. That was a pain in the butt. You don't have that problem. You literally open up your phone. It's on your app. Track everything that's going on, right? And, you know, same goes, not your keys, not your crypto. You know the drill. Check it all out, though, if you wish to do so. It is truly the cold storage solution that I use for the most part. There's still some on Ledger that, you know, I kind of split it up on it and so on. So... It is what it is, but if I have preference over one, I'm going with this one. A lot easier to use and so on. And some people, even to this day, still ask me which one to use.